So the evaluation approach that we followed um, was a little bit of a blend between developmental evaluation and utilization focused evaluation. Now, if you want to know about developmental evaluation, it's not international development evaluation, it's developmental evaluation. This is the book you need to read. Michael Patton. Okay. I need to... You've all heard about formative and summative evaluation, right? Okay, so formative evaluation, you do to get feedback. The idea with the formative evaluation is that that's what you do to get a program ready for a summative evaluation. Because if the thing keeps on changing, then you can't really say, this is the thing that we're evaluating. So that's the difference between formative and, uh, formative and summative. But Michael Patton once sat with one of his clients and um, he said, okay, now we're done with the formative evaluation. Now you need to stop changing the program because now we need to get ready to do the summative evaluation. And they looked at him like he was crazy. He's like, why must we stop changing our program? He's like, well, otherwise we can't do the summative evaluation. And they're like, well, surely there must be something else. You can't expect us to now stop doing changes and improving our program just because you want to do a summative evaluation. You evaluators need to come up with something new. So what else do you have? So Michael Patton sat there, looked down at his coffee, and he said, um, uh, well, there is something else. Um, we call it uh, developmental evaluation. He kind of made it up on the spot. He was like, okay, fine, let's do that. Um, and the idea was that, with the, unlike with formative and summative evaluation, where you need to have at some stage a stable program to evaluate, developmental evaluation works with short feedback loops. You give feedback all the time, and that feedback is used continuously to improve the program. So you never have the program that's now ready for the summative evaluation. So that's the difference between formative and summative evaluation and developmental evaluation. Developmental evaluation is very useful for innovations. So you don't quite, you kind of have an idea where you're going. You don't quite know how you're going to get there because this is new. Um, and it's also very useful when you've got complex programs. Okay, now people use language differently. We, the evaluators, when we speak about complex programs, we talk about simple, complicated, and complex programs. Right, a little bit of systems theory background. So a simple program is like uh, inoculation. You give a child a shot, um, the body reacts in a very predictable and standard way, and the kid will then not get the disease. Right? Most kids, almost all of them, will react the same if you give the, same, the kid a shot. Okay? That's a simple program. Now, you know, of course, that um, most of the programs that we are working in is not that simple. You, don't, you put a child in a class to get education, and some of them learn and some of them don't learn. But it was the same teacher, it was the same program. How in the, obviously, education isn't, isn't as simple as giving a child a shot. So that's where we talk about complicated and complex programs. A complicated program is where there's very many different components working together to break to create a change and complex programs is also you've got very many different components but you don't quite know what the result is going to be. It's almost like parenting. Patricia Rogers uses the example of parenting. She says you've got your two children, for the one you discipline in a certain way and another one you discipline in exactly the same way and you get totally different outcomes. You, you, you really can't predict it so you have to continuously adapt your style in response to the individual. Okay, so. That's what we mean when we say a complex program. So with the South African Extraordinary Schools Coalition, we've got this group of schools who could do anything. Um, we don't quite know what they're going to do. We just know it's a good idea for them to get together and put their energy together and see where, where it's going. So that's why we decided with, to go with developmental evaluation as an approach. Our second kind of, I, my philosophy is utilization focused. Okay. An evaluation costs money. That money can be used to buy a book for a learner, it can be bought, it can be used to pay for a teacher for a learner. The stuff that really makes a difference for, for that learner at the end of the day. So if I'm not adding value at the end of the day, I'm taking money away from those very real kind of things that you can do to improve a learner's life. So in order to make sure that I add value, I subscribe to utilization focused evaluation. I don't produce doorstops. In my career, I have produced a couple of doorstops. I have been paid lots of money to produce an evaluation report that somebody put on a shelf and never read again. 
I hate those kind of things. So I don't like that. The thing with utilization focused evaluations, you from the beginning figured out who's going to read what it is that you're going to say, and who's going to change because of what you are saying. In the case of the coalition, the person who we identified who's going to be our ear is Barbara because she sits on the steering committee of the, the coalition. There's a steering committee which we also give our feedback to. But more frequently, we, we whisper in, in Barbara's ear to say, listen, something is coming up, you know, this might require uh, a response. So identify who the person is that you're going to influence and what it is that that person is going to do. If that person can't do anything with what you're providing, you're wasting evaluation resources. So utilization-focused evaluation is the other kind of um, approach that we followed. Um, when I got to the coalition, the coalition had already got some sort of a draft monitoring and evaluation framework going, and they said that they wanted to do monitoring and evaluation. This is a nicely written up bit, hey? um, because it's key to its sustainability, to their long-term growth and continued relevance to the learning community. Um, and it will essentially address these three questions. How is the coalition performing? How is the coalition planning for sustainability? And how can the coalition be strengthened? So if you look at those kinds of questions, how can the coalition be strengthened? That's usually what we put in a formative evaluation kind of approach. Eh? So giving them feedback that can help them be strengthened. How is the coalition performing? Good or bad? That's, a, that's an evaluative judgment that you're required to make. You need to judge the merit of, or worth. That's the definition of evaluation, judging the merit or worth of the coalition. So that's what this question is asking. And then it had a very specific question. How is the coalition planning for sustainability? So besides just merit and worth, they placed sustainability as a criterion very high up on the list. So those were the three things that they said that they wanted to get out of monitoring and evaluation. I said, okay, fine. Let's quickly frame. So in that workshop, I put this um, framework up. Please, if you haven't, if you're keen on monitoring and evaluation, and you haven't discovered better evaluation yet, please go and do yourself a favor and go and visit www.bettervaluation.org. Uh, Professor Patricia Rogers from the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology is the uh, brains behind that, working with a whole lot of donors and a whole lot of people, evaluation experts across the world to put really good and practical information in a frame. I mean, you can do a Google search for evaluation, but you don't quite know what you need. Better evaluation helps you figure out what it is that you need. And how they structure it is they've got this rainbow fr framework. They say you need to manage an evaluation. So if you're interested in that, they've got all range of resources that will help you manage. You need to then define your evaluation, frame it, describe your findings, understand the causes for your findings, you need to synthesize your findings, and then you need to report and support use. So within this framework, they've got lots of theoretical frameworks, tools, guidelines, examples, really cool website. So their definition for framing, remember in our workshop, the initial workshop, we said, now we're going to frame the evaluation, the framework. They say if you frame, you need to decide the purpose of your evaluation, you need to specify your questions, and determine which criteria will be considered to define the success. Okay, that's nice. We could do that in the workshop. That's quite easy. Um, the purpose of the, remember that first one says decide purpose. Okay, here we go. Three purposes. We want to learn, we want to be accountable, and we want to build a knowledge base. Very simple. That's almost the purpose of all evaluations. Some of them might have a preference for one to the other, especially if you've got a donor-driven evaluation, then the focus is all on accountability. Right, then it's not necessarily a good idea to do, do a de developmental evaluation. But you can. Um, so again, these were the three initial questions of the coalition. and. Behind them are the need to learn, to be accountable, and to build a knowledge base. So that's framing. Then, remember, if we go back to it, determine which criteria will be considered to def define success. So if we ask that question, how is the coalition performing? In terms of what? I mean, we can answer that question in a variety of ways. So we need something to hook our definition of success on. There is this framework called the OECD DAC criteria, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. 
the DAC is the Developmental Assist Development Assistance Committee. So it's this big multinational organization, and they've got this committee that concerns themselves with monitoring and evaluation. And very many years already ago, they decided that if you want to do a half-baked job or a decent job with an evaluation, you at least need to look at the relevance, effectiveness, impact, cost, timeline, and sustainability. So if you do an evaluation that doesn't look at all of these things, then probably you're missing something. That doesn't mean you have to do all of it, but they decided it's a good idea. And that influence has now gone so far that almost all of the international development agencies take this as, you know, this is the word, this is the way we should, should is, this is just what we have to do. So we thought a little bit about it. They've got very specific, uh, of course, definitions for relevance and impact and sustainability. And we decided, okay, well, let's use that. It's nice and broad. Let's just adapt it for our purposes. Um, then, if we look at effectiveness, okay, effectiveness is about do we do what we're supposed to be doing, right? But that is still about how is the coalition performing. Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing? Are we doing well in terms of what we're supposed to be doing? Then we would expect these things to happen. People would rule, react positively. Okay? Um, so they'll at least like coming to the coalition meetings. It doesn't mean that if they like coming to the coalition meetings that they're learning anything, but if they don't like it, they surely won't come back. So number one, people need to react positively. Then people need to learn something. All right, so learning could be skills, values, knowledge, ad attitudes, all kinds of learning. But learning needs to happen. If people don't learn, then certainly we're not going to get to behavior change. Because that's what we want at the end of the day, right? Positive behavior change. The individual that attended that meeting needs to go and do something differently after he's been in that meeting. If that individual changes his or her behavior, then it's possible that he or she can transform the whole organization and our schools can start becoming better. Now, this idea of reaction, learning, individual behavior, organizational behavior, we decided to define change for the coalition in this way. That's again a theoretical framework. When you define your evaluations, it's useful. Go and read how you think uh, changes are supposed to be happening. This was almost kind of like a theory of change for us. So the, the theory that we're referring to here is the Kirkpatrick model. Again, there's lots of problems with the Kirkpatrick model. There's good things with the Kirkpatrick model. For our purposes, we decided that it is useful. Um, I think that model comes from the 1960s, in fact. So it's also been around for a very long time. So those were the criteria that we then decided to incorporate in our evaluation. Okay, so then decide the purpose. We've now decided what are the criteria. Now, what are our questions? Our questions flows from our criteria. So remember, criteria one is relevance. We decided re relevance for our purposes is the extent to which the coalition and its activities are suited to the priorities and policies of the target group, the recipients, and the donor. And then we created these sub-questions. How has the coalition objectives and activities changed? To what extent are the objectives of the coalition still valid? etc, etc.